You know all the good things about recycling. It conserves our natural resources, it helps save energy, and it protects the environment. But do you know how recycling really works? Have you ever wondered what happens to all the material you put into your recycling container once it leaves your house? I'm here at a modern recycling center to show you how we turn ordinary, everyday recyclable items like paper, cardboard, metal cans, and plastic jugs and bottles like this one into reusable raw material like this bale, ready to be used in manufacturing new products. Let's head inside to take a closer look. Well, we're now inside the recycling center itself and I'm with Amy. And Amy, you're the general manager here at the Recycling Center. Yes, sir, I am. Quite a responsibility, isn't it? It is, it is. Uh, we take it very seriously. At this Recycling Center, we process recyclables uh, from over half a million residents and over 2,500 commercial businesses. You know, when I look outside this huge window here and see all these all these things, I know they have names to them <laughs> themselves, but it looks super complicated. It is, Lane. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art facility with some of the most advanced technology here to help us recycle materials. Things like eddy currents and magnets and optical sorters that help us to sort out things like paper and plastics and aluminum and tin and cardboard. And then I guess eventually, right, I haven't seen it yet, but eventually the product that you're recovering here actually makes its way back into the community. Absolutely. So everything we do here is to help support the community in creating a more sustainable environment. Wow. Well, you know, it all sounds great, but I want to see more. All right. Well, let's go take a look. All right. I'm with you. The tipping floor is where it all begins. Recycling trucks haul their loads to this part of the facility and empty them out to be sorted. Well, I'm here with Guillermo, and Guillermo is the operations manager here at the Plano Recycling Center. And that's a pretty big deal. It is. Let's go look at some of the material that's in here. Because when I first look at this, right, they came from a residential, right, neighborhood probably? Absolutely, yeah. This looks like residential material. You're going to see a blend of, uh, you know, good recyclable materials and some prohibited or contamination. It almost looks similar to what goes to the landfill. Just by looking at it, you know, I mean, there, there's good material. You know, we got paper, we got cardboard, we got aluminum cans, we got PET bottles. But I'm also seeing a lot of contamination. You know, I got plastic bags, grocery bags. All right, so no, no, we don't want this. This is a no. We want only the key materials we can recycle. Paper, cardboard, metal cans, and plastic bottles and jugs. Here's a good example right here. That is a great example. So, so, so I made my sandwich with mayonnaise this morning and I didn't clean it out and I threw it away. No? Now nah, that's a big problem. We want the plastic, right? I mean, for sure, this is a PET. Uh, the problem is that it has all kind of uh, leftovers in there. So what do I do as a customer with this? It's very simple, man. Before you put it in your bin, just rinse it. I mean, I'm not asking you, you know what I mean, put soap in there uh, and take five, ten minutes just cleaning it, but just try to keep it empty, clean and dry. So just rinse it up with water. Uh, you know, usually, you know what I mean, I shake it a little bit, let it go, and then you're good to go. It's important that we keep all recyclables empty, clean, and dry of all food and liquid. Just one dirty ketchup bottle could contaminate other recyclables in your container and in other places throughout the recycling process. First of all, we want the recyclable material to be loose. Don't bag it, all right? Um, unfortunately, you know, we're still gonna get it like this, and what we have to do manually, you know, once we fit this into our system, uh, on our pre-sort station, our sorters are gonna have to cut it open to find out what is inside. Uh, we might be lucky, like in this case, it seems like it's really good material. I got PET, I got cardboard, I got aluminum, I got HDPE, it looks like paper and more plastic. So it looks good, right? But at the end of the day, look, I got another bag on the floor that doesn't belong here. This is no. This is a no-no. Okay. So that's why we're asking, you know, just keep it loose, uh, don't bag it, just put your recyclables in the bin. 
Then, heavy equipment loads the contents onto a conveyor belt. As the material goes down the line, sorting specialists separate the trash that can't be recycled, like yard waste or dirty packaging, even furniture and clothing. This is our pre-sort station. Uh, it's actually the first station where we are going to start pulling a certain material and a lot of contamination prohibited from the stream. There's a lot of um, uh, you know, non-recyclable that these guys have to pull from the stream. They're going also um, after uh, the rigid plastic and the scrap metal. So these guys stay busy all day long for sure. In a high-tech facility like this, we can process up to 350 tons per day when everyone recycles properly. But if our recycling stream gets contaminated with non-recyclable waste, it slows down the whole process. Look what we found. So first, a bunch of um, cables, and then this looks like a rug. Oh, so someone actually put that in the recycle bin. Somebody did. So somebody thought that that was recyclable material and they sent it to us. Wow, so actually what it does is it not only slows this down, but it potentially causes problems for our machinery. Absolutely, you saw the size of that rug, so that can jam the, uh, the equipment. You know, if these guys are not paying attention and for some reason and it's not going into the screen, that's going to get jammed and that's going to cause down time. And you know, I mean, that, that's definitely something that we don't want to, to go through. Based on the size and weight of the cardboard, it automatically gets diverted to different sorting areas. You want to make sure your cardboard boxes are clean and flattened before placing them in your recycling container. After the pre-sort line, the cardboard gets separated, it goes up, and then it comes down here, right? That is correct, yep. Right. And it comes down here to this chute. Uh, this is actually the quality control line for cardboard. So as you can see, uh, we got the sorter just pulling the prohibited and contamination from that stream because again you know there might be some things that doesn't belong to this line so they're going to be pulling all that uh, putting them on those shoes where, where that material belongs. As the line moves on sifters continue to do their work shaking out material for recycling. So we talk about cardboard now let me show you what we do with paper. All right. Special machinery called optical sorters and tumblers pull paper products from the line and sort them into large and small pieces. So it's a really a great piece of technology that uses air and light to recognize some specific uh, material. So uh, the first four that we have inside are just for paper and cardboard. So the whole concept is there's a computer, a scanner, you recognize the material that is going after it. And then as the, uh, as the paper goes through, uh, it's like a ball block with air nozzles. You know, the computer already told the air nozzle or the valve, hey, you know, this is your piece of paper. So as the piece of paper goes through, it's going to shoot air up, and then the piece of paper is going to get diverted into a different line. So the machine actually sees what it is and identifies it. Correct. Wow, and then the air shoots it yep. and separates. Plastic also gets separated out using equipment specifically made for the job. As you might be familiar with the plastics one through seven, we got three optical sorters dedicated for um, a specific plastic. The first one will go after the uh, PET, the water bottle. Uh, the second one will go after the HDPE, which is uh, your milk jugs or uh, your soap uh, uh, bottle detergents. And the last one is going after number plastic number five, which is uh, polypropylene, uh, a lot of food containers, uh, your jogger tops, things like that. Powerful magnets are strategically placed to separate metals from plastic and divert them to their correct destination. After, you know, we separated all the plastic, uh, at that point we have all the metals and aluminum cans uh, left on the stream. So first of all, all that material will go through uh, our magnet belt. Um, the way it works, you know, it has a magnetic feel like in the center of the, of the, um, of the belt, the uh, tin cans are going to get attracted and at the end, the tin cans will fall into a bunker, the storage bunker is ready to be uh, bailed. Okay, and then they get here. And then it gets here, right? So at this point, we got the eddy current 
uh, and it's gonna go after you know the aluminum can. So it creates like a current and it creates a magnetic field. It's going to repel the aluminum can. Okay, so it's not attracting them, it's actually repelling them. So it's actually pushing it off of the bell over into this side. Right. Don't you feel like trying to catch them? Oh man, I love I love this uh, this piece of equipment. At this point, we take another pass at picking out all the cardboard by hand and we suction up all the loose plastic bags that are still there. Plastic bags get caught in the machinery, causing delays and damage to the equipment. All of these automated procedures are controlled by the touch of a button, using a portable tablet that works anywhere in the facility. There's so many belts, there's so many screens, there's, there's so many sorting devices, optical, etc. Um, actually changing one would seem to be a lot of work. This is something that we can do from here with this tablet. I just need to walk with this to a specific area and I can make any kind of adjustments to the speed of a conveyor, the angle of a screen. Um, I can check uh, the temperature of the motors. I can start my baler. I can uh, start the system, shut down the system. Maybe um, a, a jam, right? So yeah. one of the, the bells will stop. You know, it will trigger an error, the system will shut down, and then it just be, um, it will be up to me to look at the alarm, to see what the problem is. We'll go to the specific area, and then we'll troubleshoot it, and we keep going. Do you ever play any, like, solitaire or any video games on it? Uh, I have not, but, you know what I mean, you're giving me a good idea. Yeah, maybe, uh, I'm just saying. Maybe a break or lunch time, I can, I can go for it. <laughs> So this is sort of end of the line, is it not? It is, yeah. At this point, you know, all this material is already going to a uh, storage bunker and is ready to be bailed. The bail. Let's go look at the baler. Let's do it. At the end of the line, paper and cardboard are sent to machines that press the material into big blocked size bundles called bales. These machines can bale up to 50 tons of paper and cardboard an hour. Plastic and aluminum are also pressed into bales. We stack and organize all the bales so they're ready to be shipped out. This is the culmination, isn't it? It is. Kind of the final product, our last touch. It and is. explain to me what's happening here. Okay, so once all these commodities, all this material has made it through our pieces of equipment, uh, it goes into uh, storage bunkers, right? And then from there, we got the ability to send all that material to um, either the uh, single ram baler, the two ram baler. All right, so two balers. We got two balers. Yeah. Um, this one right here, we relied on this, especially for uh, cardboard and paper. As you can see, these are belts of clean cardboard and they look pretty good. Uh, we got a bell dresser, which is doing right there on the other side. It's just making sure that there's no prohibited contamination. Um, and then this material is ready to be uh, stacked or be ready to be uh, put in, a, in an outbound trailer and send it to a paper mill. Wow, so how heavy is a typical cardboard bale? A typical uh, dry cardboard bale could be about 2,500 pounds. We're compressing a lot of material right there. Um, like on an outbound trailer, we just put between 15 and 16 bales per truck. Those are like a tractor trailer, right? That's, that's hauling that out of here. Correct. The bales are then bought by manufacturers that will further break down the materials in different ways, such as melting the plastic into liquid. That allows them to use the material in making new materials and products. These days, we see lots of products that are totally or partly made from recycled materials, including electronics, airplanes, and even clothes. This is not the end for this material, which is the, uh, the most important thing, you know, I mean, from here, it's gonna go to paper mills, where, you know what I mean, they're gonna be making new material, new paper, new cardboard, uh, or in case of the plastic, you know what I mean, we, we got customers that can make carpet, and can make t-shirts, uh, a lot of stuff out of uh, recyclable material. So most likely, that bale right there, right, what's in that bale, I might touch again. Yeah, well, absolutely, you know, I mean, uh, just uh, a, a fun fact, you know, I mean, like aluminum cans, you know, it takes about 
60 days from the moment that you put that can in your recycling bin yeah. to the moment that it will be, you know, I mean, back in the market. So it comes to a place like this, we sort it out, we bail it, we send it to our customers and they're going to produce, you know, new aluminum and then you're going to go there and... Two months. Okay. Yeah. Two months I throw it in the recycle bin and then maybe I'm holding that and drinking out of that can again. Right. Dude, that's more than fun. It is. It's an awesome fun fact. Recycling creates a circle called the recycling loop. It starts with collecting recyclables and then turning them into new products. When people buy these products made from recycled materials, we say they are closing the recycling loop. I really appreciated you taking the time and walking us through today. No, it was, uh, it was my pleasure. Um, I'm glad you, you came in, you enjoyed, you have a great time, and uh, you're more than welcome to come back anytime. Dude, and I will. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks, a, Thanks lot. a lot. Not a problem. And that's how a recycling center works. Not only does recycling help keep our towns and neighborhoods clean, it turns used plastic, paper, and metal into all sorts of other products we use every day. Remember, you can make a difference in your school, at home, and in your community by recycling and helping others become better recyclers.